The Amazon is home to many of the Western Hemisphere's most successful predators. But the most surprising apex predator isn't the piranha, the anaconda, or even the legendary jaguar. It's the giant otter. Alone, they can take on lots of different opponents. Together, there's nothing they can't handle. You definitely don't want to put your feet up on this otterman, but being on the top of the food chain definitely has its perks as the giant otter knows here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy, your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube. And thank you to, Ver- thank you to Brian for the creation of this week's artwork. To check it out, you can visit us on Facebook or Twitter at LD Taxonomy or visit us at our home on the web at LDTaxonomy.com. And today we're talking about a lengthy, lengthy... And today we're talking about a lanky tooth missile that isn't scared of nobody. But more on that later. Tooth missile sounds just painful for everyone. Everyone involved. He's he's trying to blow up and act like he don't know nobody. At the cost of his teeth. Mm -hmm. Gotta protect those things. I don't think you know you know what the meme we're talking about is, but it uh, no the it, things you're saying make it sound like you might. No, I don't know. <laughs> what what is this? A tooth missile is a meme? No, no, the other thing I said. Oh, don't I'm trying to act. I'm trying to blow up and act like I don't know nobody. Nope. <laughs> nope. That's uh. But I'm now changing the ending. <laughs> What are we talking about, though? Not a meme. Mm, we're always talking about memes. Uh, that I hope that's not true. Technically, memes are what are they? Units of culture. Units that's of what culture. It, that's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, so, the like the Mona meme. Lisa is a le- is a meme. A meme is an idea, behavior, or style that spreads by means of imitation from person to person within a culture and often carries symbolic meaning, representing a particular phenomenon or theme. Uh, Impressionism. That's... (laughs) There you go. Impressionist movement. That's a meme. Yeah, it's mimetic. Oh, now I see where that comes from. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Are we done doing meme research? Yeah, <laughs> meme search. Meme search. Uh, we're talking about the giant river otter. Yeah. Big, giant Amazon river otter. But do you have other things to call it? Yes, when Brian sent in the artwork, he called it the Otterman Empire. And if you look at the artwork, it it shows. It shows that's his inspiration. Um. It's um. We're also gonna call it here the uh, utterly adorable Amazon otter, and the lithe and lethal killer swim weasel. <laughs> but yeah, we're talking about the otter. I also oh, I have a um, I have an animal story of the week. I guess um, it's actually not of this week. It's been around for a little while. So on my running route, there are a lot of Canadian geese. There's just geese all over the place where I live. Um, and they usually are in large groups, but one of them has a broken wing and it looks like it's been like Rudolph shunned by its friends. <laughs> it's always just on its own looking out, uh, like forlornly, <laughs> if that's a word over the, over the lake near where I'm, um, where I run. So there's all of these geese just hanging out and honking at each other in one spot. And then all the way out of the other spot is this lone goose with a broken wing that is just looking out. And uh, it's it's kind of funny, but mostly sad. Because it you wants find it to, kind of funny, you find it kind of sad. It really wants to take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Fly again so free. <laughs> 
Bro- broken wings are a, are a common song metaphor, I guess. It is. Um, you didn't want to take it into your house and get like goose ticks or something? <laughs> <laughs> They're goose bumps, buddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very true. If you touch a goose, you get goose bumps. That's what happens. Um, yeah, the last thing I want to do is take is is touch a goose um, or get near one. But uh, so I didn't I didn't bring it into my house. Plus, there's nothing I can do. It's got a broken wing. I can't fix it. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but uh, I mean, he can still like swim and catch fish and eat eat whatever he eats, like uh, pond scum, kelp, <laughs> something like that. Um, so <laughs> he'll you know he'll live a long and not very productive. Um, or a fruitful life, but not as not long as very he doesn't reproductive life. As long as he doesn't, uh, I imagine he broke that wing trying to run into the road. Um, so as long as he doesn't do that again, he should be fine. Well, if he ran into the road, he maybe needs to be selected out anyway. Yeah. The bummer is, is that when winter is over and all of his friends go home, he will not go home with them. He will be the lone goose remaining at the pond. But anyway, that's my goose story. What There's so many of them and they're all over like the sidewalk that I run on. One of these days, they're going to go for me. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to, my fists are going to have to start, start flying. So, uh, how about you taxonomize this? It's in the kingdom you know, love, and are in, the kingdom Animalia. The phylum is Chordata. The class is Mammalia. We've, we're mammals with spines so far. Doing Order is Carnivora, which means it's probably talking about jaw structure more than anything. Uh, the family is Mustelidae. Weasels. Weasels. Weasels and badgers and... The, and the like. Stuff that's long. Uh, the genus is Terranura. There's a silent P. And the species yep. is Brasiliensis. 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 Brasil. Brasil. Ponytail. <laughs> Uh, so that's, yeah, ter- Terranura brasiliensis. Nice. The Yeah, the silent P there on, on uh, Terranura really throws things off. But since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show, critter groups. The part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question, and that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal? What is the term of entry? What is the collective noun? We have never covered an otter before, so... We get it. We like this. This this one was right up there, floated to the top, um, like an otter would if it decided to float. <laughs> so, if you saw a group of otters, which they're gregarious, so if you ever if you see one otter, you're probably likely to see more. Um, would you say it's a a lodge of otters, b a flow of otters, c a scamp of otters? Or D, a pack of otters? D, a pack of otters. Final answer. You don't want to think about that? No. Eh, incorrect. The answer was lodge. Uh, that makes sense. The lodge of otters. I went with pack because I knew they were, there's a lot of like nomenclature that is similar to dogs. Like their young are called pups. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought maybe that would throw you off rather than me making up something. I'd, I'd pick something that has a, that where a lot of animals have it. But nope, it's a lodge. And there are actually f- quite a few more. So if we ever lose this footage, we could do the game again. Is that the same as a otter, uh, beaver? A lodge? Or is that just the name of like the inside of a beaver dam? I don't know. But if we ever cover the beaver, which we're, I think we should... Um, I feel like we should save it. Okay, I won't look it up. Don't look it up. Um, yeah, it's a lodge of otters. I just think of a secret society of otters. 
like a moose lodge yeah <laughs> instead it's the otter lodge i'd rather be in the otter uh, otter lodge than the moose lodge the the loyal order of otter <laughs> <laughs> let's talk do you, do you want to know what it looks like very long boy the giant river otter is a mustelid and like other mustelids it's a long boy lanky otters have long bodies compared to their short legs they have sleek and very dense fur that makes them look smooth compared to their fuzzy sea otter kin as far as mustelids go they are pretty gnarly looking animals with large mouths and long sharp canines they're not they're not cute i think they're cute oh they're not cute they're not they're like if you compare them to any other otter they're they're nasty they're nasty little guys no I th- and they have this grimace where they like reveal reveal all of their like pink shredded gums and their big canines i think they look like when they're swimming they look really cute when they're just sitting there and looking up they look cute when they're eating or hunting or something yeah they look pretty fierce but <laughs> I don't know. They just look like puppies. They look like like seals. And I think seals are cute. They do look more like seals. Their faces are similar to seals. And they have large nostrils that are high on the top of their rounded snout. Which is very seal-esque. Um, and they have webbed feet and flat wing-like tails. That can uh, act like a fin underwater. Same. You can act like Finn. Finn, um, FN, FN2187. Underwater. Good. good. Uh, you can have a really disappointing story arc. <laughs> yeah, I can start off really strong and funny and then just end up uh, with my entire character uh, personality being Where's Ray? Be- being unrequited love. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Let's t- let's let's we have to talk about how big it is. It's called giant. How big is that? Sure. Welcome to the beloved measure up segment. The official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying singing or chittering. The words measure up into LD Taxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro this week. But that means we get to hear from an animal, and Carlos is the guess what it is. Let's do it. Bring it on. Okie dokie. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Okay. I feel so uh, attacked. Attacked? Yeah, it was so aggressive. I feel like uh, <laughs> I, I, I feel like the the goblins of Moria are beating the drums and they're ready to come <laughs> after me. Uh, is that a a rabbit? Is it B a grouse? Is it C a kangaroo? Or is it D a woodpecker? So is it thumper? I don't think it's a rabbit. Uh, Grouse is a wild card because I don't know anything about it. Sort of like a partridge. (laughs) (laughs) Partridge, pheasant, grouse, quail. It's all basically just one bird. It sounded hefty. So maybe kangaroo. But that that was some fast stuff. I'm going to go with woodpecker. Because it was just it was so fast that there's a, a it it doesn't seem like something a a kangaroo um, or a rabbit would be able to do. So, uh, what did, what was it? woodpecker? Final answer. That is incorrect. Oh, it's a grouse. Oh, well, at least- the rough the roughed grouse engages in what is called drumming so it was beating his drums at you 
<laughs> the drums of war. That was it flapping its wings. That, wow. That's some aggressive wing flapping. The, uh, the video is very funny because there's a log and it, it literally looks like <laughs> this grouse comes from off stage from behind and like just gets up on the log dead center of the frame. The camera didn't move and it just stares directly at the camera and does this. He and the cameraman were working together. <laughs> this was this was collusion. <laughs> you can click on the link to see that video on ldtaxonomy.com. I think but I will. Let's talk length. They're 1.5 and 1.7 meters or 4.9 and 5.6 feet. Those are long boys. Yeah. How many giant otters go into the mean diameter of Halley's Comet? The mean and nasty diameter. Um, it's been a while since I've known what mean means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not the average. It's, it's like the, it's if you have a the, if you have a list of five numbers, it's the third number. No, that's the, the median, one, isn't it? Oh, maybe mean is average. No. Mean, median, and... Or maybe it is. Mean, median, and mode. Yeah. It's the average. It's the average. Just the average. Yep, you're right. It is just the average. Okay, so the average diameter of Halley's Comet, I'm assuming... Well, wouldn't a comet just get smaller all the time? Because it's get, it's it's getting so because, destroyed. Well, because the tra the tail of a comet is trail of tears. Comet tears. Um, so I don't know what the average diameter would be. Uh, but I guess it doesn't matter because I wouldn't it wouldn't change how much I know about this. Um. Well, I remember when Fry, Leela, and Bender landed on Halley's Comet to mine it for ice so that they could combat global warming. <laughs> and it was pretty big then. <laughs> um, Hopefully they did their research. They didn't have to. They had a giant drill and an ice dispenser with a cup <laughs> in order to get enough ice to drop into the ocean to make the earth cold again. Um, make the earth cold again. Put that on a hat. <laughs> um, but make sure the hat is blue. Um, I blue don't, for cold. I don't, <laughs> blue, blue for cold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, blue as in cold. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, I don't know. Um, the diameter of Halley's Comet is probably a hundred miles. That's probably bigger than that. No, we'll go. Would you like a hint? With a hundred miles, will it help? Here's a hint Halley's Comet is the only comet that can be seen with the naked eye twice in a human lifetime. Uh, its elliptical orbital path brings it close in close to the sun before launching it back out to the far reaches of the solar system. It's a felion, or the farthest orbital distance an object from the sun can be, is about the same as Pluto's orbit, which is 35 AU, hmm. or 3 trillion miles. That's a long way to go. Five trillion kilometers. Um, yeah, we're going to go with 100 miles. That seems like it would make sense. Size of a, of like a one of the smaller states. 
Uh, just off the top of my head, I'm going to say 94,285.7142857.1429. Ballpark in here. 94,000. 94,000 otters? Mm, yeah. Final answer? Yes. The correct answer is 6,470 otters. Oh, Haley's Cove is just a, just a little thing. It's just a, it's it's, just a wee tyke. Its mean diameter is 6.8 miles or 11 kilometers. Oh, that wouldn't even cause a uh, an apocalyptic event if it hit if it hit the planet. If it hit Earth. It wouldn't be good. That's not we have nothing to worry about. <laughs> uh it's um it's yeah, it's, it's isn't it crazy that you can see that with your na- naked eye? That's how close it gets sometimes. Yeah, I I I don't think I've I I haven't seen it yet. I don't know when is it coming by again? When is it visiting? <laughs> Good question. Cuz I got Time make, of perihelion. I got to make sure I get the guess room ready. 2060. 2061. Okay. So then I probably all it's probably already passed in my lifetime and then it'll make firebenders like super powerful <laughs> yeah even though it's ice <laughs> um <laughs> actually i haven't thought never thought of it that way <laughs> it's just it looks like it's on it, i mean in in the show it it like breaks the atmosphere so there's a lot of fire involved. Anyway. <laughs> Let's talk about the weight. Sure. They were 26 and uh, between 26 and 32 kilograms. Uh, 57 and 71 pounds. Quite a, quite a hefty little mustelid. It's a medium sized dog. Quite a big dog. This actually. is a pretty big dog. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, a 71, that, those are males. So females might be a little bit more like a medium sized dog. It's quite a big swing, 50 to 71. Mm-hmm. How many yellow crowned Amazon parrots could a giant otter eat if it ate its weight in parrots? I've always wanted to eat my weight in parrots. <laughs> Here's a hint. Amazon parrots are a genus of parrots native to South America, but they're found all over the Americas and in the Caribbean. Hmm. Also popular as pets. Are there those green ones that people keep releasing in South Florida know. and they fly around and very are very noisy? Those, are, like those are Quaker parrots, but I don't know if they are in the genus. Okay. All right. I'm assuming that an Amazon river parrot is the size of a regular macaw which is pretty big but birds don't weigh very much so yeah we'll go with 10 pounds so the answer is 7.1 i guess 7.1 since we're getting to 71 pounds final answer yeah final answer correct answer is 76 but these parrots are so regular size for a parrot. S- you went with one of the biggest parrots. <laughs> a macaw is huge. Yeah, I was also thinking like cockatoos and when I think of parrots, I think of those. But like think of a Quaker parrot. Those are small. I I I classify those as parakeets. The yellow crowned Amazon parrot is 15 ounces. I bet you um I was way off in my weight estimate. <laughs> even even for a macaw, I bet you a macaw is like two pounds or something like that. Yeah, they're like, like three, a vulture. three pounds. Red-shouldered are f- small, little. Nine ounces, 12 ounces. The biggest one seems to be... Of a macaw? Yeah, two to, two to four pounds. A ten pound. Yeah, I was, okay, I was way off. That's like the that's like how, like a the weight of a of a jug of water. Let's. That's all I got for that. Do you want to hear any fast facts? A little bit. Okay. 
They are uh, very much the wolves of the Amazon. Otters live in large family groups and hunt in packs or lodges, I guess. They have been observed using more than 20 different vocalizations to communicate. Their dense fur acts as a dry suit, not allowing water to reach their skin. This makes them more hydrodynamic, and it protects them from losing too much heat in the water. They can close their nostrils while underwater and open them when they surface like other aquatic mammals, like seals. Very seal-like. Um, th- they mostly eat fish, and they can eat up to 10% of their body weight in fish every day. 68 quarter pounders? <laughs> yeah. With yeah. cheese? You should have went with the cheeburger, cheeburger, one pound burger for easier math. Oh, I haven't been to cheeburger, cheeburger in a minute. Are you ready for the major fact? I'm no. What? I am not. What? <laughs> because each dry season, the otters uh, <laughs> mark exposed muddy banks with their scent to mark their territory. The whole family gets together and pees in the mud. S- sounds sounds like wholesome family activities. Yeah, but they're currently endangered, uh, mostly due to habitat loss. So that's not fun for them. That's the Amazon for you. Yeah, but uh, that's all. Now that's all. now I'm ready for the major fact. All right, now that's all, folks. Yes. Um. All right, time for the major fact called Adorable Apex in the Amazon. Although I'm feeling like I have to change this because maybe I'm the only person that thinks that these guys are cute. Um, and, and oh, okay, I will admit they're not like stoat cute, or but I don't know. They're they they just look like they look like puppies. They look like dogs, and dogs are cute for the most part. Johanna. Um, can you look up a, a Amazon river otter and tell me if it's cute? You got to pick the right picture. Most of the time they're eating something and that's horrifying. Google image search, Google image search giant river otter. Tell me if it's cute. Look, look, okay. So you know how uh, the, the image gives you... Um, She's going to get a bunch of images. Al- no, it gives you the alternate, like, alternative things you can like add to your search. Look, he's not cute. <laughs> Can you hear that? Cute, cute is one of the sig- <laughs> like people also ask things. <laughs> did you hear? Did, can you hear what she's? Yeah, she's saying it's not even close. <laughs> she's horrified. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I know they do have. They have these like beady little eyes. Oh, wait, this one has big eyes, but they're like bulging like a Shih Tzu's eye. <laughs> Those eyes, like a Shih Tzu's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> I don't know. I maintain that as long as these things' teeth aren't bared, they're they're cute. <clears throat> cute in a dog way, not in like a I want to put it in my pocket kind of way, like I would like to scratch its head kind of kind of way. <clears throat> as far as otters go, I'll admit that they're not um, the they're cutest not, of them all. They're not on the cute. The, the, they, they're not going to be winning any prizes. Except for like being able to murder all the other otters, <laughs> um, they'll 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 win the heavyweight prize, but um, not they're not winning the beauty contest anyway. Um, apex in the Amazon, I guess we'll call it instead of the adorable apex in the Amazon. <clears throat> so yeah. the Amazon is the well abominable known for- apex in the Amazon. <laughs> You're acting like this thing is so ugly. You would put it out of its misery if you saw it in person. Let me send no, you a picture. <laughs> no wonder they're endangered. People, pe- pe- it's because of people like you. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got eyes bugging out of its head. Yeah. 
<laughs> he looks so um coy. It does look like a koi. <laughs> he looks koi. It looks like it's trying to become fish. <laughs> now I am become fish. <laughs> <laughs> um all right. Anyway, um the, so the Amazon is known for having lots of deadly things in it. In uh, particularly in or near the Amazon River. And so there are massive constrictor snakes like the anaconda, the uh, mini crocodile series called the caiman, uh, actual crocodiles, jaguars, and the river is full of piranhas, which are ravenous fish that strip the flesh from your bones in seconds. But while Debatable. These, they can. Do they always? Maybe not. But they, they can certainly... They can certainly uh, turn a carcass into a skeleton very quickly. Um, And they are predatory, and they do attack and kill things. Um, But maybe they're maybe we should cover them because they're uh, they're their myth has has uh, exceeded fact. Same with wolves. We got to cover wolves anyway. Um, while all of these animals I mentioned are formidable, you only get the title of apex predator if you eat without getting eaten, at least on the regular. Uh, so like the jaguar and the crocodile, they get to stay, they're apex predators, um, because they prey on things and there's really nothing that makes a habit of eating full grown crocodiles and, or jaguars, but the piranha has to keep an eye out for crocodiles, birds, and dolphins and other things. Uh, the caiman and the anaconda would also make the list, uh, but there is one little killer, or not so little killer, I guess, that looms over them like a furry shadow in a furry convention. <laughs> uh, the giant otter. No one picks otters at a furry convention. There are always foxes and wolves and stuff like that. Come on, let's get I some otters in Disney this subculture. World. Disney. There's no otter movie. Do you? Uh, Emmett Otterton is one is the is one of the characters in Zootopia. He's that's, the that's one that goes edition. missing, so he's he's not in there <laughs> really. But I mean, they really just need a princess to spend more of her time in the in the Amazon River, and then otters can play a uh, like a pretty significant role in the movie. But until that time, I guess they're going to be underrepresented. And it's just sad, really. Um, anyway, the uh, giant otter is uniquely suited for underwater combat. Like you said, it has a dry suit, which means that water doesn't get through its uh, through its dense fur. And uh, it makes it very hydrodynamic. Um, it's five feet. It's over five feet long and weighs as much as a beefy dog. So it's pretty formidable as just an animal in general. Um, and it's slender body and powerful muscles coupled with its fur allow it to slice through the water quickly and change directions on a dime. Um, it has hypersensitive whiskers that can sense disturbances in the water from quite a distance. And, uh, it's, it, it, it can move so quickly and so agile. Agilely? That's not a word. And so... And it is so agile <laughs> that um, its its main food source is fish, uh, but it doesn't have to ambush them. It just chases them. And fish are pretty good swimmers. It's kind of their thing. And they're fast. If you've ever tried to catch a fish uh, with your hands, you would know that it's, it's pretty much... Um, futile unless you're like noodling for catfish um but like trying to just chase one is nigh impossible um but if you are an amazon giant river otter then you can chase them down uh and they almost always get what they're going for they very rarely fail uh in a catch and they also hunt and eat piranhas um their main source is fish like you said um and but if fish aren't available they'll also eat crabs birds or even larger prey so if some 
there's lots of things in the Amazon, including some of the animals I mentioned as apex as um, as potential candidates for apex predators. Um, and they can sometimes be on the menu. So if something is too big or too dangerous to take down alone, the otter will enlist some of its friends to join the hunt. Usually, otters hunt on their own. They just catch whatever fish they can get and eat it and don't share. Uh, they're just selfish that way. Um, but when there there aren't many fish around or there is an opportunity that just can't be passed up, like a juicy juvenile anaconda or even a black caiman, uh, then it's time to get the boys. And <laughs> uh, and black caimans can be up to 11 feet long. So this is this five and a half foot mammal taking down <clears throat> like a dragon. <laughs> um, so... Uh, just get, getting them together with their powerful jaws, they can take down pretty substantial prey, and they can even fend off uh, large predators like the jaguar. So we've covered animals before that can that band together and can fend off like lions and things like that. Um, so this, you just wouldn't think that an otter is, uh, I guess, t uh, tenacious enough. Um, it's kind of has a badger streak to it, which is, I mean, it's a mustelid. So these guys are kind of known for picking fights and coming out on top, surprisingly, like, um, the, like mongooses and, and, um, uh, cobras and then badgers and everything in the world. And, uh, the Amazon river otter and jaguars because of this aggression, uh, and this camaraderie, and they're just their their uh, bulk and ability to go through the water pretty quickly. They have no serious natural predators, which means no species regularly preys on them. They're not like it's not like you can say this animal eats giant otters as part of its diet, um, but that doesn't mean that their young um, won't be targeted as prey. Uh, if left unattended and if uh, a, a a giant otter is left is caught alone with like an anaconda or a full-grown caiman or a jaguar uh, then things will go south quickly but probably not without a fight I remember when we were watching uh, first saw Zootopia <clears throat> and like part of the movie is like predators versus non-predators and, like, it's all launched because a predator, Emmett Otterton, is gone. And I was like, huh, I guess otters are, like, pretty pretty crazy predators. And, uh, yeah, this, this this is one otter you don't want to mess with. I still, even the even though you sent me a picture of one with eyes bugging out of its head, I still want to scritch, scritch it behind it, the back of its head. Like, it's like a pug. Yeah, at this point, it's like a pug. Yeah, so it's kind of like... It's not conventionally cute by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still cute, I guess. I like pugs. I wouldn't own one, but I'll, I'd hang out with one. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, uh, my brother-in-law has a pug and, uh, they treat it like their own child. And who Speak wouldn't? Speaking of brother-in-laws, this was a suggestion by my other brother-in-law, Caleb, again, who has been so nice to, as to suggest many animals that he's come across uh, that he thinks are cool and wants to hear more about. So, thanks, Caleb. Yeah, thanks. This is a good good suggestion, because it was not on my radar. Just when you think of, like, the deadliest and... Um, and like most capable predators in the Amazon, I, like I bet you for the average person, the otter doesn't even doesn't even come to mind. <clears throat> but here we are, <laughs> and that's all I got. That's all I got. All right, so that was the giant otter, the Amazon River otter. Uh, for you out there in Podcastia, take a swim. Hone your hunting skills. 
And don't take no guff from no one like the giant otter here in life, death, and taxon. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> oh wait no and don't explode and act like you've been there before <laughs> like the giant <laughs> otter here in life death and taxonomy how does that go again <laughs> blow up and act like you don't know nobody there we go <laughs> have some class and act like you don't know nobody and blow up <laughs> explode <laughs>